Back in the year 1840, there was a conflict with British settlers and native Maoris from New Zealand. They had a disagreement between equal land distribution. In the North Islands of New Zealand, settlers were coming into New Zealand and started taking over the native land. Around this time, there were 125,000 Maori and 2,000 settlers in New Zealand. The first of the settlers were whalers and sealers. Vendors had also landed to exchange regular assets, for example, flax and timber from Maori in return for weapons, garments, and other items. More and more immigrants had then begun to permanently settle into New Zealand, and they were not agreeing on their equal use of land. The British were taking over, so the Maori had decided to seek out for protection from William IV and the King of England. The Maori people did not feel safe with all the new settlers coming in. They dreaded a takeover by countries like France and needed to stop the disorder of the British individuals in their nation. This conflict and compromise was about having fair and equal use of the New Zealand land between both the British Crown and the native Maoris. Named after the place in the Bay of Islands where it was first signed on February 6, 1840, the treaty was also signed at locations around the country over a seven-month period. It was signed because the British and Maoris had finally come to an agreement. The Treaty of Waitangi was signed by representatives of the British Crown and various Maori chiefs from the North Islands of New Zealand. However, there are a few major differences in the English and the Maori versions of the treaty. For example, the first article said in English that the Queen shall have all the rights and powers of sovereignty, while in the Maori text it stated that the Queen shall have the complete government of their land. The second text in English said that the Maori will get undisturbed and exclusive possession of their land, estates, forests, fisheries, and other properties, while in the Maori text it stated that the Maori would get exercise of their chieftainship over these. The British Crown had initiated the conflict because at first the Maori people were just living life and then all of a sudden the British comes in and they want their land. It had first started because there was a disagreement with equal land distributions. The people that were mostly involved was the Maoris but somewhat the British also. These two groups were involved because it had affected them in either a positive or negative way. It was bad enough for the natives when the settlers just kept coming in and taking their land, but the thing that provoked it was that the settlement kept increasing. The Maoris felt the most impact of this conflict and compromise, because imagine if you had a house and some random people just started to move in and pretty much take over. In your case, you wouldn't like that, and it wouldn't be right. And this is how the Maoris felt when the British were settling. New Zealand natives, but more specifically the Maori people, felt that the actions after the treaty being signed were unright and unfair. As the population of European settlers was on the rise, people felt it was not relevant or necessary to comply with. Rules were broken, land was confiscated, the treaty was almost forgotten. There was a problem with this because the settlers tried to buy land without consulting all of the Maori landowners. The British government appointed Captain William Hobson as consul and provided him with instructions to negotiate for the sovereignty of New Zealand and for setting up of a British colony. His proclamations were ratified by the British government in October of 1840. When the Maoris wanted to sell their land, the government said that they were only allowed to sell it to the government. The government made all the natives sell their own land for cheap so that they could later raise the prices and then sell it for more to incoming settlers. Even though the treaty was signed, the government did not hold up on their end of the bargain. The government did not do what they said they would do, which was give the Maoris a chance to control their property and lives. After the treaty was signed, the government wanted a lot more of the native land 
so that they could make money by selling the land for higher prices. The second action that occurred was a long war between the government and the Taranaki Hapu who wanted to keep their land. It was an alarming time for the kids because there was so much savagery. For the individuals who battled back against the government, the government wanted to discipline those individuals. So what they did was they had taken away the land belonging to those Hapu. In any case, the government took much more land than it said it would take. It said that it would give some of it back so that the Maori families would have some place to live. But it didn't give any land back for more than 10 years. And even then, it did not return anywhere near as much land as it said it would. After the battle, there was a community called Parihaka. They thought it was wrong to fight and better to solve problems by talking. So instead of battling the government for not giving their land back, they decided to plow the land that was once theirs. They called this their peaceful protests. 400 men that plowed the land was arrested and put into jail. The government then had stole the land that was left over and some of this land fed communities. The British army had broken down fences so they could clear the land, but when they broke the fences, the Maoris put them back up. This sequence had continued quite often. So the government made new laws saying they could put Maoris in jail without going to trial. The government did not like the people at Parihaka controlling their own lives. It claimed that the people at Parihaka was preparing for war against the government. The Treaty of Waitangi did not change even after it was signed. There was a long war between the government's army and the Taranaki Hapu who wanted to keep their land. The government had a duty to oversee the land, not have the land, but rather only protect it. They did not follow their responsibility because they just took the land of the Maoris. The government had taken the Maoris land because they needed more land for settlers to live on. Many men, women, and children were killed over this issue. The Treaty of Waitangi is a conflict and compromise about land equality with settlers and natives. The conflict of land equality between the British Crown and the native Maoris started a commotion and changed New Zealand forever. This is very important because it had affected each side either a positive or negative way. The Maori's lives were affected in a negative way by settlers just coming in and taking their land. The British were affected in a positive way by them just taking people's land. Even though it is not right just to take what is not yours, the British were selfish and did not obey the treaty. The Treaty of Waitangi is one of New Zealand's most critical occasions. It is a thing that made this place as it united two countries. The signing of the treaty has led to many events, events like wars, disputes, and conflicts. These conflicts had affected their lives and made a huge impact on both the British and the Maoris. While disagreements over the terms of the treaty continue to this day, it is still considered New Zealand's founding document.